I V M. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey. Welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hello and welcome to All Things Policy. I'm Aditya Parikh, research analyst at the Takshashila Institution. Before we begin, I'd just like to mention that admissions are still open for our graduate certificate programs. We offer specializations in advanced public policy, tech policy, and defense and foreign affairs. To know more, check out the link in the show notes. Coming to today's episode. On April 12th, Sri Lanka declared default on all payments on its $51 billion external debt to save precious forex reserves to buy oil and agricultural commodities. The alarming level of food scarcity in the country has mobilized the population to demand the ouster of its president, Kotbaya Rajpaksha, with the slogans, Go Gota Go, and Go Home Gota, echoing on the streets. How has the situation deteriorated to such an extent? What is the role of the Ukraine war in aggravating economic instability in Sri Lanka? What is the political future of the Rajpaksha family? And what can India do to help ease the situation in the country? To discuss these topics, I have with me today Dr. Shrey Khanna, Staff Research Analyst at the Takshashila Institution and my friend, to discuss. Welcome, Shrey. Thank you. So, Shrey, to start with, with growing food scarcity in the country, I'm inclined to ask, what exactly is the role that the Ukraine war has played in aggravating the economic instability in Sri Lanka? Alta, so, uh, as we know that uh, you know, Sri Lanka has been facing this balance of payment crisis for quite some time uh, since the onset of pandemic in 2020. Though it's even more, uh, you know, long term with the those unsustainable level of debt that they have taken, but particularly, especially after 2020, they were facing this balance of payment crisis, and it was going on till early this year. Now they were thinking of, you know, uh, using their uh, exports and tourism to gain that foreign exchange reserve so that they can pay for those essential items. And what the war has done is that, uh, for example, Sri Lanka's one of the main export is tea. Uh, they export about uh, 1.27 billion worth of tea and they exported this in 2020. So taking that estimate, there's in, in that year, Russia was one of the main export market for Sri Lankan tea. Around 10% of Sri Lankan tea went there. Now, in uh, January 22, before this uh, Russian campaign, around 2.5 million kilograms of uh, tea was exported in January alone. So, uh, and making Russia second largest buyer of uh, Sri Lankan tea. But what has happened after the sanctions were announced on Russia, uh, it dealt a heavy blow to Sri Lankan exports uh, because they could not get their payments done, even if they can, you know, sell tea to Sri Lanka. How are they? was supposed to get that foreign exchange. And it also had a debilitating impact on uh, Sri Lankan tourism, which is another important source of forex reserves for the island. And their uh, tourism uh, sector, it is recovering. First, there were, you know, Easter Sunday bombings in, in April 2019. And then uh, after that, Corona came. And uh, with COVID-19, there was lockdown. And uh, all 2020 till December, the country was shut down. There was no tourists. And... In 2021, situation normalized a bit, but it was not that much. For example, uh, in 2018, 2.3 million tourists you know, traveled to the country as compared to 2021, when even after the revival that has happened, uh, only uh, around 2 lakh uh, tourists came there. But what happened was even in these tourists, uh, in these 2 lakh tourists, were mainly from India and Eastern Europe, Russia, Ukraine, in fact, Russia and Ukraine, nationals from there, they amounted to around 25% of all tourists in January this year. And uh, after the invasion, there have been reports that, you know, not only the inquiries from Russian and uh, Ukrainian nationals, they came to a halt, but also those Russians who were 
already in Sri Lanka, they had a tough time to pay Sri Lankans. So they had to, you know, cancel their bookings because they did not have any money. And another uh, significant impact of uh, Ukrainian uh, or uh, Ukraine war is that the oil and commodity price boom, which, you know, it following the Russian invasion, it generated quite a massive inflationary pressure on Sri Lankan economy. And there was all uh, because of shortage of dollars, they were struggling to buy essential items, import essential items. And with this inflationary boom, then, you know, it kind of further deteriorated the situation. And then in February and March, the protests against President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's government, uh, they intensified. And then again, because of law and order thing, then there were, you know, second order impact when uh, UK and Canada, they issued advisory warning the citizens about uh, food shortages in the country. So it's like uh, the war, the impact of war, it has been quite much, but the crisis that they were facing, it was quite, it is a long run crisis. The regime would have survived for a few more months, the Rajapaksha regime, since Russian uh, invasion, but it just kind of fast tracked. Collab. Interesting. So it's actually a crisis that was pre-existing in Sri Lanka and it got aggravated because of uh, the current conflict in Ukraine is the sense right. that I get from. Right. So uh, let's talk about the Rajapaksha family, which is at the center of uh, this political turmoil in Sri Lanka. So what's their uh, political future and why does China not come out to help them? Since we hear so much about uh, Chinese influence in Sri Lanka, what is the reason that China is not stepping on? So, um, as you pointed out uh, in your intro, that you know, the massive protests are going on against President Gotabaya. And uh, the protests are you know, against not just President, but whole family. Uh, there are you know, at least five people of the family who are in the government. There is uh, Mahindra Rajapakshe, elder brother of Gotabaya, who is prime minister. Then there is finance minister, and uh, you know other members of family, uh, Namal, uh, Basil, Rajapakshe. They are all there, and uh, protesters are demanding because they are seeing that that sort of dynasty doing nothing for Sri Lanka, but ruling through brute force and uh, uh, engaging in you know quite a huge deal of corruption. So uh, there are a lot of protests, but there is political opposition. In Sri Lanka, it's quite disunited. So, uh, Rajapaksa, they can hope that they will, uh, they can come out of this crisis. As far as China is concerned, China and Rajapaksa, they have a quite patron-client relationship. It was there in the past. Rajapaksa is a project of Sinhalese majoritarianism. China totally supported it. And it, in exchange, it got uh, those spectacular infrastructure projects. Vis-a-vis PRI, uh, the Humbando Dakota and uh, Colombo Port City Project, etc. Uh, even there were, you know, there were reports that in uh, 2015 uh, presidential elections, Chinese ambassador in Colombo, he was, you know, distributing money so that uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa will win. So that is there. But uh, after that, what has happened is that, uh, especially recently, there is a rise of anti-China sentiment in the country. And... Uh, Particularly after that port, Colombo Port City Economic Commission bill that came out and it was seen in Sri Lanka that Rajapaksa is, they are, you know, ceding Sri Lankan sovereignty to China. And then one of the biggest block behind Rajapaksa, it came in opposition to this influential Buddhist monks. They started protesting against it. And then there was, you know, backlash against China. Then we saw that fertilizer controversy that happened. And after there was a there was series of uh, events that happened. Uh, finally, because India was also there. So, and uh, the Chinese projects in Northern Sri Lanka, they were concerned to India. They were finally cancelled. So, China caught, uh, because of this uh, anti-China sentiment and the incapability of the Rajapaksa family to, you know, keep that sentiment in check to safeguard Chinese interests. That was not there. And as Rajapaksa began losing that ability to, you know, control that anti-China sentiment, we see China becoming more, uh, you know, aloof from Rajapaksa. So uh, since the start of pandemic, China uh, handed out billions, uh, I think around 2 billion, they gave it to Sri Lanka since uh, 2020. But eventually they stopped helping them in the uh, later part of uh, 2021. 
uh, and this was captured in you know uh, Wangi's visit when he visited uh, Sri Lanka in early January this year, uh, and when Sri Lanka asked for you know that uh, loans which are there, uh, they if they can be restructured or if some further help can be provided, China did not give an answer. And uh, instead, uh, Wangi he said that you know give us equal opportunity. And he also mentioned the role of India as a third party. So this was this concern that uh, India, the benefits that are being given to India, uh, or how India is being dealt with, China is not being given same amount of uh, importance. So and that is all uh, related to how Rajapak say they have to do their. If they have to do their domestic politics, they have to keep that Sinhalese put this majoritarianism in check. And if that majoritarianism goes against China, there is very little Rajapaksa can do. And then we saw China becoming more and more aloof from Rajapaksa. Also, there can be another reason is that there are not many spectacular big projects which are there for China to take without initiating another round of uh, anti-China protests because there will be that, uh, those concerns regarding debt trap. So that is also there. And unless uh, Rajapaksa can offer some uh, great uh, projects to China, uh, why should they help them? So that, that may be another reason why China has gone back uh, and not helping uh, Rajapaksa family actively now, uh, even after supporting them throughout the world for more than uh, 10 years. Interesting. On that note, folks, we'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere. Hey, everybody. It's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On this round is on me. Gauri talks to friend of the network, Viral Jani. Viral is the EVP and country head for Timesbridge India. He tells us how his company helps marquee global brands set up shop in India. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam talks to Saeri Chahal, CEO and founder of Shiro's and Mahila Money. They discuss why women need a fair perspective on finance. On Think Fast, Varun and Suchita take a look at YouTube's interest in podcasting and the new super app Tata Neo. On IBM Likes, Antrik, Snehal and Sparsh cover all the latest movie releases from Moon Knight to RRR. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav traces the history of the clove and how it was smuggled across borders. Do follow us on social media where IBM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you enjoyed this show or any of our other shows for that matter, do please tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. You can check us out on YouTube as well. On ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, we have a list of all of our YouTube channels. Do check out if your favorite show is available as full video. We are also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We'd really, 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 really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it out. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this week, SBI Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and Jupiter, a digital banking app. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back, folks. We're discussing the crisis in Sri Lanka with Shrey. So for my final question, Shrey, What can India do to ease the situation in Sri Lanka? So uh, around the same time, we saw this deterioration of uh, Sri Lanka and uh, China relationship. Uh, We see sort of a rapprochement between Sri Lanka and India. So after in August 2021, there was, uh, you know, after 18 months of keeping the position vacant, Sri Lanka sent a new high commissioner to New Delhi. And since then, there has been, uh, you know, an uptick in the relationship. India has provided a sort of a 2.4 billion in economic in uh, preferential loans and lines of credit. On Sri Lankan part, they have made progress on Indian projects like Western Container Terminal and Trikonamali Oil Farm. India has also provided more than 11,000 metric tons of rice there. The eve of Tamil and Sinhali's New Year. So India is also helping in humanitarian way. There are also medicines being provided. So that is there. But, uh, you know, one concern that is there in Sri Lanka, especially in a position that the help that India is providing to Sri Lanka, it should not, you know, support the case for Rajapaksa family and their political legitimacy because they have lost their popular uh, legitimacy. Uh, So even if India is helping them, India should help people without, you know, doing much for support of Rajapaksa brother. And political stability in this regard is very important for India because 
if things continue to deteriorate there there will be you know a refugee crisis in in tamil nadu so that is also a situation and in, there have been reports that india is playing a role in uh, forming an interim government so those are unconfirmed reports but there so uh, uh, securing political stability in sri lanka is very important to convince rajapakse uh, family that uh, you know your time is up you ten opposition is united on the fact that you know rajapakse they'll have to go out uh, the point what happens next is you know there is uh, no clarity about it and that's the this disunity this among the opposition parties is what rajapakse family is taking advantage of so and this is just you know prolonging the misery of normal sri lanka so india has to play a role it has to play that economic a uh, role as well as a political role another thing is that imf thing shil uh, rajapakse has shown great reluctance to take support from imf so that uh, finally because they have uh, made a default now they have to go to imf but even that in those negotiations they are not as proactive that they should be so india should also uh, you know uh, india can nudge them to have that settlement their concern is that if they take money from imf then they again have to their us pressure on human rights on uh, tamil questions so uh, because of this rajapakse have been you know, greatly disinclined about taking money from imf right now they are talking uh, with imf so india can also you know come and um, support that uh, process that's very intriguing on that note folks we'll call it a wrap if you like today's episode please do check out all past and future episodes of all things policy If you liked our show, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can tune into them on the IVM podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy, and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle. at takshashila inst or our website takshashila.org.in have you ever wondered where the business world is headed how the ways in which we create market and sell to consumers will evolve or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders, and change makers from across business, media, marketing, and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Ladies, I'm sure you will relate to it if I say that we are constantly busy with work, studies, cooking, and what not. And amidst all of this, we often forget an important element that needs our desperate attention: finance. So here we are, bringing to you SBI Life presents a sip of finance, a women-exclusive podcast where we will teach you how to manage personal finances in a simple and straightforward way with your host Priyanka Acharya, a finance expert who's been in the industry for 14 plus years. and not just in english but in seven more languages so tune in every tuesday for fresh episodes on the ibm podcast network and all major podcast streaming platforms